Hello friends, this video on reproduction in organisms part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So now it is time to look at some of the questions just to check whether you got it right or not. So let us look at question number one. Which is better mode of reproduction, sexual or asexual and why? So now if you look at both the modes of reproduction, both sexual and asexual, you will see that both has its own uh, benefits as well as disadvantages. However, if you have to choose one of them, I think sexual mode of reproduction is a better mode of reproduction because it introduces variations. Now, as I said, that in asexual reproduction, the new organisms which are produced, that they, they are exact copies of their parents. So there is no variation at all. And why do we want variations? Because variations are always for better. It helps the organisms to survive under adverse conditions, uh, it also helps in the evolution of new species with small, small variations over a period of time. You get a new species altogether, a new variety altogether. So variation results in origin of species. So because of some of these reasons, sexual reproduction is a better mode. Question number two. Why is the offspring formed by asexual reproduction referred to as clone? Very simple. Clone is something which is exact copy of something else. Now in asexual reproduction, the organisms which are produced are genetically as well as morphologically identical to the parents and that is why they are called clones. So in asexual reproduction, only one parent is involved. So that is one thing. Now since one parent is involved, it becomes very easy to copy the DNA and produce an exact replica. So the offspring produced are genetically and morphologically identical to the parents and that is why they are called clone. Let us look at question number three. How does the progeny formed from asexual reproduction differ from those formed by sexual reproduction? Now, as we already discussed, in case of asexual reproduction, since only one parent is involved, therefore the new individuals which are formed are exact copies of the parent. So the offsprings are genetically and morphologically identical to parent. So that is one thing. No variations are seen. So here we do not uh, get to see any sort of variations because they are exactly identical. Whereas on the other hand, in case of sexual reproduction, the offsprings are not exactly identical. However, they might have some similarities with uh, any of their parents because here two parents are involved. Variations are seen and that is something because of which uh, sexual reproduction is a preferred mode. Question number four. Higher organisms have resorted to sexual reproduction in spite of its complexity. Why? Now, sexual reproduction introduces variations and variations is something which makes the organism better. To suit it to the unfavorable environmental conditions, it is something that is better. So variations allow organisms to cope up with the unfavorable conditions. So that this is one of the important reasons because of which the higher organisms prefer sexual mode of reproduction. And also variations result in evolution of better organisms which can suit to an environment better. I mean, we already discussed about the example of dogs. For example, if the dogs want to survive in extremely cold conditions, they, they, if they have fur, that is something better. And these kind of uh, traits come with little bit of variations. Question number five. Explain why meiosis and gametogenesis are interlinked. So what is gametogenesis? Gametogenesis is the formation of gametes. So the formation of sex cells. So that is gametogenesis. And what is meiosis? Meiosis is nothing but the reductional division. That is the type of cell division where the chromosome number is reduced to half. So gametogenesis is the formation of gametes and the gametes are haploid. So how are these gametes formed? These gametes are formed from the gamete mother cells which are meiocytes and they are diploid. So in order to form haploid cells from diploid cells, so these are diploid, that is the meiocytes, and you want to form haploid cells. So that means you want to reduce the chromosome number and for that you need meiosis. So that is how 
they are interlinked so formation of haploid cells from diploid cells need reductional division and meiosis is reductional division where the chromosome number is reduced to half so that is the link between meiosis and gametogenesis question number 6 identify each part in a flowering plant and write whether it is haploid or diploid so here we are given some of the parts ovary so ovary is diploid as i said all the cells of the body they are all generally diploid except for the sex cells anther anther is again diploid egg so egg is the female gamete so this is haploid pollen pollen again is the is like the male gamete so it is again haploid male gamete haploid zygote this is diploid because the male and the female gamete fuse together to form the diploid zygote let us look at question number 7 differentiate between a zoospore and a zygote now the names look quite similar but they are two different entities so when you talk about zoospore you are talking about asexual reproduction because these are a type of spores which help in asexual reproduction whereas when you talk about zygote it is the result of sexual reproduction that is when fertilization take place between male gamete and female gamete zygote is formed so zoospore is motile because it has flagella so it can move from one place to another whereas the zygote is non motile it is just the egg so the egg is non motile right so it is just the fertilized egg so it is non motile no flagella is present question number 8 differentiate between gametogenesis and embryogenesis now as the name says gametogenesis is formation of gametes and embryogenesis is formation of embryo from gamete so gametogenesis is formation of gamete embryogenesis is development of embryo so when does gametogenesis occur before fertilization so it is a part of pre fertilization event and embryogenesis it will occur after fertilization so it is a post fertilization event in order to form gametes meiosis is involved because mostly it is formed from the diploid meiocytes whereas for for the formation of embryo from gamete from uh, the zygote repeated mitosis is involved because repeated cell division and cell differentiation leads to the formation of embryo question number 9 describe the post fertilization changes in a flower what happens after fusion has taken place as i had mentioned before also that the zygote will undergo a lot of repeated divisions and it will form the embryo the fertilized ovule ovule will turn into the seed and the ovary will become the fruit so ovary will form the fruit with a thick wall called pericarp like how you see in a mango it has got an outer covering so that covering is called pericarp now other parts like petals and sepals they all fall off so these are the post fertilization changes in a flower so as you can see in this picture the ovary turns into the fruit the ovule turns into the seed and the zygote turns into the embryo which is there inside the seed so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and i hope that this very first lesson of class 12 would have helped you so see you all in the next lesson thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.